We've seen some pretty big hauls in Storage Wars history, right? Well, today I'm gonna cover seven of the biggest scores in Storage Wars history. Welcome back to Filmvert. Let's get into the video. Number seven, the Holy Grail of Lockers. Well, Indiana Jones may be clever enough to choose the Holy Grail on his own. If he wanted to be extra cautious, he probably should have held off on the decision so that he could talk things over with Daryl Sheets. Over the course of the show, the gambler, who is already showing up for the second time on our list, has found other ways to make bank besides dealing in rare art. In this case, it came in the form of a comic book and toy collection that he purchased back in Season 5, which he literally dubbed the Holy Grail of Toys. The locker contained an endless supply of G.I. Joes, Hot Wheels, and a whole host of other collectible dolls and toys, along with an absolutely massive collection of comics. We're talking 3,000 books, with Schmitz sheets valued at approximately $10 a piece. The count kept rising as sheets tallied up the mountain of collectibles, finally settling on a total that topped $90,000. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay, so all together for all 50 prints, signed by the artist. Number 6, Video Game Treasures. Moving from comics to video games, the first episode of Season 10 featured another huge find, this time going to bitter Rene Nazoda, who landed the locker for a meager $1,500. The haul? Video games, video games, and still more video games. The collection was monstrous, filling up a large locker and clearly assembled by a collector who knew their stuff. Throughout the very long process of adding up the endless procession of vintage entertainment pieces, it quickly became apparent that this wasn't just a massive pile of surplus. There was a nary a duplicate in the mix, with the dusty pile of memorabilia containing everything from rare Sega Genesis games to a copy of the NES game Bubble Bobble Part 2 that was worth several hundred dollars on its own. The whole collection, once it had been painstakingly counted up, was worth upwards of $50,000. Kotaku broke down some of the particular gaming treasures in their coverage of this incredible find. No and, um, Papa Salt Stars, which is Bubble Bubble 3. Very rare to get. Number 5, Day at the Museum, $50,000. Renee and Casey are the favorites of some, but not everyone since they came onto the show somewhat later, but they have been granted the kind fortune that the others have occasionally since it would appear that they know what they're doing. In this episode, they scored a regular treasure trove of items that eventually totaled up to 50 grand altogether. You might want to say that this doesn't count since each item has its own set value and one would have to combine them to get the overall amount, but honestly, it's the entire unit that's the payoff, so it does count. It's kind of hard to imagine anyone putting things up in storage and then simply leaving them where they are and when they cost too much. But people are strange, obviously. Look at this piece of art here. Something's funny looking. It's a lady's face in a window. Uh -huh. Number 4, Daryl's Game Unit, $90,000. Honestly, no self-respecting gamer or collector would ever let so many comics and other items lay in storage for so long, at least not without the means to keep paying for the unit. It's actually a good thing for the gambler that storage units don't just toss out whatever is in the unit to make way for someone that can actually pay. Otherwise, his wealth of items would have been gone long ago. Something like this, however, is the kind of find that might make a real collector go into shock from the sheer number of items that were found in the locker. To think that someone just invests this kind of money in something, anything, and then just leaves it is hard to fathom. Number I mean, uh, we didn't film them, they're just so, so fast. Some more N NES games, Vindicators. Three, Dave's Elvis memorabilia, $90,000. Dave is known for being the biggest jerk on the show since he intentionally rubs everyone the wrong way and does his best to trip everyone up. Whether that's an act for the show or is really like that is hard to say, but he does know what he's doing when he picks out his lockers apparently. Finding a bunch of old newspapers it isn't much when it comes to opening a locker, but finding the papers that were printed when Elvis Presley died is a reason to think that the rest of the unit might actually be worth more than it appears to be. They are worth frames, and tables, and everything. I see at least two thousand dollars here. You got some decent customs over here, dude. Five hundred bucks in that truck. Number two, pirate chest, five hundred thousand dollars. These next two were part of the show, but weren't stars, so they decided to remain anonymous when it came to announcing what they'd found. This proves that the big finds don't always take place when the camera is on, since the couple managed to find a veritable pirate's whore contained in blue totes. There were actual doubloons as well as gold coins that equaled out to half a million dollars. Just left to lie there and collect dust. As far as hiding pirate booty goes, this would definitely be one location that few if any people would ever think to look. But it's also mind numbing to think that anyone would just leave it there for an auction hunter to find. How much are you selling it for? Making offers. I don't make offers. You want all it? Depending on the price. Number one, Mafia Money, $7.5 million. Another anonymous sale that happened when the cameras were off yielded up a safe that was revealed to have several million dollars in it, which was hard to believe in the first place since no one just up and leaves money in a safe in a storage unit, right? 
but apparently someone did. And when an offer for $600,000 was given to the couple in order to have them give up the money, they refused. But when the offer was up to $1.2 million, the idea that the money belonged to someone that might really want it back started to register, and the $1.2 million started looking pretty good. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. Also watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.